people from around the world ascended on the city of Louisville to mourn the death and say their farewells to the three-time heavyweight champion of the world, Muhammad Ali. Arguably, Ali was the most famous and adored person of our time. But this wasn't always the case. From his conversion to Islam to his refusal to fight in Vietnam, it was not always a love fest. I mean, folks were looking at Ali like he was un-American, that he was unpatriotic, that him talking about justice and injustice, especially when it came to the lives of black people, that that somehow was antithetical to what America was supposedly standing for, which, as we know now, is not the case. He was not only despised by so many, but hated, reprimanded, um, especially when he refused to go to the Vietnam War. I'm not going to help nobody get something my Negroes don't have. If I'm going to die, I'll die now, right here fighting you. If I'm going to die, you my enemy. My enemy is the white people, not Viet Congs or Chinese or Japanese. You my opposer when I want freedom. You my opposer when I want justice. You my opposer when I want equality. You won't even stand up for me in America for my religious beliefs, and you want me to go somewhere and fight, but you won't even stand up for me here at home. What Ali was in the 60s was really a brother who had courage, who had conviction, who had talent, and was able to stand up against a, a system. Because understand, a deformed system always produces deformed human beings. And out of that deformation came Ali, standing up for what was right. Like Thurgood Marshall said, you do what's right and you wait for the law to catch up. Ali was doing what was right and was waiting for the world to catch up. And he was looking back at his people and say, look, look at me. I'm standing up to these people. I'm speaking my mind. I'm a free black man in America, and I'm still here. You can be too. And then you see the more silent he became because of his affliction, the more they loved him. The quieter he was, the louder their affection for him could become. My conscience won't let me go shoot my brother or some darker people or some poor hungry people in the mud a big powerful America, and shoot them for what? They never call me nigger. They never lynch me. They never put no dogs on me. They never rob me of my nationality, rape and kill my mother and father. What am I going to shoot them for what? How can I go shoot them? Them little poor little black people, little babies and children and women. How can I shoot them poor people? I would just take me to jail. When Muhammad spoke out stridently about race, when he spoke out stridently about the way in which this nation uh, was giving over to a kind of militarism that we see today e even more prominently when, when he talked about the great inequities and inequalities in, in American society, when he talked about our double standards and our duplicity around pushing for human rights abroad and denying those very rights to black and brown people and poor, poor whites in this country here uh, internally, uh, he was hated for that, uh, hated uh, uh, all around this country and not just by whites for that matter. There were many African Americans inside of their respectable kind of spaces also launching the same critique. This country loves people, you know, and especially the majority population of this country loves black people who make them comfortable. Ali didn't make them comfortable. I guarantee you right now, the most comfortable that a whole lot of people in this country are with Ali is today, because he's dead and can't open his mouth anymore. But for young black folk, for any black folk, especially black men, I would say that Ali's message to all of us, for real, is be a man. Be a man. Don't be a coward. Don't be one of these people going around talking about you like to work behind the scenes. Don't be one of those people talking about you work and make backroom deals. Don't be one of those people every time somebody asks you to do something, you say, oh, I would, but I got too much to lose. Be a man, not a coward. Be committed to something greater than yourself. That's what Ali was all about. And if you say you loved Ali, but you, you know, don't live like Ali, don't lay your rhetorical hands on him. Ali, most people want to just see him as an athlete. And then some want to see him as this great humanitarian, right, toward the end of his life. No one wants to think about Ali and all of the many layers and nuances that he had within him. He was an athlete, he was a social activist, he was Muslim, and he celebrated and boldly lived all those aspects of his life um, until the very end, until Parkinson's took his voice. And I do believe that if Parkinson's had not taken Ali's voice, we would know exactly what he thought, what he felt, um, 
especially now in this climate of Black Lives Matter and police brutality and state violence. I mean, I, I definitely believe Ali, just like he had been before, he would be very outspoken about the injustices that black people face. So, I mean, he's always been a hero of mine. He's greatly missed and, you know, 